How's it? Welcome along to Bezos Garage. Um, today uh, we're going to pull apart the peerless gearbox, have a little nosy inside, see what sort of state it's in, um, and then um, we'll see what we need to do with it. So I've got one sitting here. So this is the old standard peerless 1000 gearbox. Um, yeah, nothing too flash about them. So we'll just uh, we'll just start pulling it apart and see what we can find inside. I haven't had this little part before, so we'll just see how we get on. Uh, undo the four screws at the top. Uh, hopefully they're not going to be too stuck. Good start. Oh. One more to go. It's always, always, always a good idea to get the base, best baking tray. And then you can put all your stuff in the best baking tray. Just make sure you clean it before you give it back to your uh, your accomplice. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's uh, pretty normal. So inside here, um, poor, it doesn't smell too good. So this has got um, nothing inside it. All the grease, all the oil has all gone out of it completely. So that's um, that's not very good. So um, we've undone the top. There's nothing in there. All the grease, all the bearing, the, everything's disappeared. So we'll just undo the side plate. See what sort of a state we're in inside there. They're very simple these gearboxes, which is a nice, a nice thing about them. I'll just undo this bit. So these are getting harder to find these days. Uh, you still can, you can buy them new. Um, I think in New Zealand they're about sort of seven, eight hundred dollars, or maybe even more. Um, your best bet is to scout around and um, find an old mower that's got one on the, on the drive deck. So that's a little bit of a tap. Well stuck on. Hopefully it'll just no, doesn't want to be friendly. Okay, so we'll have to get a slightly smaller screwdriver. Try and get it to try and get it to part out here. There we go. So we'll pull this pin off. Uh, we'll probably try and put some new seals on it as well. Um, yeah, some crust stuff that was caught around it. Uh, there's part of the part of the seal that should be in there. Um, right now, if you look inside there, you can see a circlip. So we're going to take that circlip off to get the gear out. So I'll put it back up in here again, and I'll get some uh, some trusty circlip pliers. I've got some that go the right way. And we'll put these in here. These can be a little bit a little bit tricky. Right. Okay, so that's loosen the circlip off. Okay, so now we've got the shaft, we've got the gear, and the circlip on the end. Now I always quite like to, to lay things out so I know which way they went, and it means that um, when I put it back together again, I know what, how it all works. So yeah, that seal's um, pretty much disintegrated on there, so we're going to definitely need a new seal. Um, had all those guns caught inside it, so that's probably why, why that was there. So um, now what we should be able to do is um, this bearing should basically just fall out. Um, I might give it a little bit of a, a little bit of closing, so that's one bearing. And then the bearing on the other end there, um, we'll take the rest of this off first. So there's another circlip in the end of here. If you look right down deep in there, there's another circlip. And we need to get that circlip out. And I'll just grab my other circlip pliers. And I think the ones that I need. Right, so we'll use these ones for this one. And I'm just going to try and put the circlip pliers into here. Spread it out. This can be a bit tricky to do. Sometimes they'll come out first time, 
and sometimes they'll just be an absolute pain. So I'm going to have an extra screwdriver in there as well. I might just take this up so I don't spin. Right, now I can get my pliers in there. Try to get my pliers in there. Like I say, sometimes this is really easy, and sometimes it's just not. So, all going well. That should have got me off of there. Oh, bugger, went back in again. Oh, nearly there. Might be able to just speed this up through here now. There we go. So then the circlet comes off, and then bearing and that also comes off so that's the bearing that goes below there and if I remember rightly all we need to do now is give this a bit of a tap through and we're trying to get the seal out at the same time or is there, I'm trying to remember whether there's actually a surf clip under the seal that's a good point, I'm not 100% sure so I might just give us a little bit of a tap and just see what happens been a while since I've had to do one of these and I can't see the circlip in there so hopefully hopefully we can just give it a bit of a there we go and the whole thing falls apart right so then that's the actual bearing in there and then there's a circlip on the bottom of there um, which which can also come off as well um, so we'll just try and get that stuff off while we're here. Probably should put my glasses on, then I could probably see what I was doing, but always a little bit of a let's put it back in the device. Just to get this fully off. Oops, it doesn't turn. Get my little screwdriver. See clip pliers on there. Probably if I had a better set of pair of circuit pliers, it might make it easier too, but you know, sometimes you don't always have the exact right tool to do the job. I'm going to put the glasses on because I can't see. Right. Oh, that's better. Put that in there, put that in there, and then should be able to just lever that up. Amazing what happens when you put glasses on. There we go. So that's now off. Okay, so that circlip's now off. And then the bearing should just tap off. Okay, bearing's off. Well, nearly off. There we go. Right, so one more bearing inside there. Generally a good whack on here. Okay, another one. There we go, bearings off. Okay, so now we have a completely empty housing. So the housing actually looks pretty good. There's no damage in there. Um, so that's fine, so we can be reuse that. We now have all the bearings here. Now, to find the numbers on the bearings, if you have a look around here, it'll give you numbers on the bearings sometimes. Uh, must be on the side. Okay, so it's got a Nakamichi Japan. Uh, doesn't actually have the number on it, which is kind of unusual. So we'd have to measure them to find out the right bearings. But from memory, all these bearings are the same, E8. One, two, so there's three of these, and these are all the same, and then there's one of these which is different. Now, what I generally do is give them a good clean up and then feel them, and if they feel rough and no good, replace them. If they feel okay, just reuse them. These and actually feel 
they actually feel pretty good. So I'm actually not going to replace them. I'm just going to clean them and then I'll put them back in again. Um, I am going to get new seals. Um, we're going to have a look at the uh, the cogs themselves to see if there's any major wear or big teeth missing from them. And that doesn't look too bad. And the other cog doesn't look too bad. So the cogs are the same. So it doesn't matter where they put them. They're the same. The difference is the two shafts. One shaft is different to the other. One is the input, one's the output. Now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to machine grooves in here. And I'm going to put um, keyways in so that I can put um, my uh, SKF pulleys on and run the keyways on them. So that's completely in pieces now. So what I'll do from here is I'll clean everything up. I'll organise to get some new seals. Um, so this seal, as I say, is pretty, pretty knackered. So we're going to need a new seal for this one. Sometimes you can see the number on. If not, um, we can look them up and find out. So I'm going to get a new seal for here. I'm going to get a new seal. Input, output, new seal. Clean everything up. I'll machine up these pieces. Um, and then we'll reassemble. And I'll show you how we do the reassemble. So that'll be in the next video is reassembling the gearbox. So um, yeah, Peerless Gearbox is 101.